Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's Gospel shows us both bad and good angels. The former tempted the Saviour, the latter served him. Let us today consider the good angels. We want to consider the existence of the angels and what they do. First, their existence. The angels are intelligent creatures and are spirits, but spirits who are not united to a body as our souls are. They are simply spirits or pure spirits. The existence of angels is a truth of faith. The Bible speaks of them on almost every page, and so to deny their existence would be to deny the truth of Holy Scriptures. But even if the Bible had not revealed to us the existence of angels, we would have discovered them as a matter of nature. In God's creation, there is a permanent gradation. At the bottom, there is the mineral world, which is inanimate. At a higher level, we have the plants, which have a vegetative form of life. Still higher, the animal realm, with sensitive life, and still higher, the human world, with intellectual life. Man is therefore on the summit of the visible world, but his soul belongs to the, to the invisible, the spiritual realm. So, why should it stop there? Why does the scale stop here so abruptly with man? God does not belong to any of these areas. He is the creator. All kingdoms are the work of his hands. Man has a material part, the body, and a spiritual part, the soul. Pure matter exists, so pure spirits must also exist. The stone is a pure material being, there must also be a pure spiritual being. And since this is not man, there must be another being above man. There must be above man and below God, a being who has in himself no matter and in the same moment is not God, who is a pure created spirit as God is the creator. Such a being exists and is called angel. An angel is a creature like us, but an ex exclusively spiritual creature. God raised the good angels to a supernatural order, beholding God and enjoying eternal happiness. There was then a revolt in heaven. The rebellious angels were cast into hell and became demons, bad angels. The good angels remained in heaven and were confirmed in grace. These are the good angels. So, what do angels do? Their function consists in worshipping God and carrying out his commands. The Bible shows us angels in heaven singing the praises of God and shows us others on mission here on earth. And it is from this mission that the angels we know receive their name. Among those sent by God, having a mission to fulfill on earth are, for example, Gabriel, the angel of the Incarnation, Michael, the defeat of Lucifer, the devil, and Raphael, the companion of Tobias. Gabriel, in Hebrew, means power of God, Michael, who is like God, and Raphael, medicine of God. The angels continue this divine mission of protecting men. Each man has his own guardian angel entrusted by God to take care of him. And tradition teaches us that certain angels are also responsible for the custody of nations, cities, churches, and in a particular way of each tabernacle where the Holy Eucharist is kept. We see in today's Gospel that the angels approached Jesus and served him. Each one of us has his own guardian angel 
who accompanies him or her day and night, who protects or defends him against the dangers and snares of the devil, and who drives away from him anything that could be harmful to the salvation of our soul. Having a guardian angel who watches over us, protects us and helps us, can help us understand also that we have the certain duties to fulfill towards him. These duties could be summarized in these three points, respect, confidence, and gratitude. Respect. The guardian angel is in charge of watching over us on behalf of God. However, he is not our creator. He is anyways our superior, as he is a pure spirit. And as such, his presence should therefore always be respectfully treated by us. Confidence. Our guardian angel is not just an overseer. He is also a helper, a friend, God's ambassador to us. We should therefore have total confidence in him. He wishes to procure God's glory and our good without any personal interest and gratitude. We know we are often ungrateful. We like to receive and do not know how to thank. How many dangers our angel has saved us from and how little we remember him. He is indeed a little bit like God himself whom he represents in the sense that he is the great unknown. Let us be grateful for him to him for his help, and his, this gratitude on our part will increase his care, vigilance, and affection for us. God, in his great love for us, gives each one of us our own unique guide, a guardian angel, to keep us going in the right direction on our path towards heaven. Guardian angels watch over us, pray for us, and help as, as, as a guide of our thoughts and inclinations. They can even protect us from, from physical as well as spiritual harm. Christ himself referred to guardian angels when he said once, referring to children, that their angels in heaven always see the faith of my Father who is in heaven. How great is the value of the human soul that every single person has received an angel for his protection. Saint Bernard exhorted the faithful to make the holy angels your friends and honor them by your prayers. He added, never to do in the presence of your angel what you would do not do in my presence. The evil angels, the demons, want to drag us down to hell with them by goading us into all kinds of sinful and malicious behavior. But fortunately, our guardian angel can help us to follow our Lord's footsteps on the road towards heaven instead. As often, therefore, as the most serious temptation is perceived to weigh upon you and an exceptional trial is threatening, call to your God, your leader, your helper in your needs, in your tribulation. Cry to him and say, Lord, save us, we perish. Why should we fear with such guardians? They are faithful, they are prudent, they are powerful. Why do we tremble? Saint Bernard tells us that we do not need to fear the plans of Satan when we remain close to our guardian angel. And when we are not able to go to church for some valid motive, we can even say to him, Dear guardian angel, go for me to the church. There kneel down at mass for me. At the offertory, take me to God and offer him my service. What I am, what I have, offer as my gift. At the consecration, with your seraphic strength, Adore my Savior truly present, praying for those who have loved me, for those who have offended me, 
and for those now deceased, that the blood of Jesus may purify them all. During Holy Communion, bring to me the body and blood of Jesus, uniting him with me in spirit, so that my heart may become his dwelling place. Plead with him that through the, his sacrifice all people throughout the world may be saved. When the Mass ends, bring home to me and to every home the Lord's blessing. We want to entrust and consecrate ourselves to Our Lady, the Queen of Angels. Under the guidance of our guardian angel, we will learn to love her and to love God always more day by day. Therefore, we want to make the proposal to be always faithful to the good inspirations with which God sends us through our guardian angel and to always free evil, flee evil, sorry, from which he wants to protect us. Thus we pray, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.